Hi, this is Eric Lyons, and this video tutorial will show you how to use Koji's RNA-Seq processing pipeline. This project is a collaboration with James Schnabel at the University of Nebraska and the Koji team developers Matt Baumhoff and Evan Briones. When you want to do RNA-Seq, often what you want to do is be able to take all the reads you generate, clean them up, and map them to your genome of interest. And what we have now is the ability to do that to any of the genomes inside of Koji. To do this, the first thing you need to do is log in. Here we're logged in with Koji's test user, and then what you want to do is go to your profile page. This profile page is where you can manage all of your data inside of the system, including adding in new stuff. So we're going to load in a new experiment. This is what we call things such as RNA-seq um, experiments. So to show you how fast this is, I'm going to use this stopwatch to time the entire process. So first we're going to go ahead and give this a name. We're going to call it test RNA-seq. We're going to give it a version. We're going to say where these data came from. Um, this is going to be from the Lions Lab. We're going to keep it restricted, and these are going to be test reads that we're going to map to the Arabidopsis genome. And we're going to use Columbia Zero, the public version of it. Then we have to add in our data files. So you can retrieve data. You can upload it if you want to, get it from a remote FTP server, or retrieve it from your iPlant data store. We recommend the data store. It's fast. It's easy. It's powerful. So inside of here, we've got our Arabidopsis folder. I've got some FASTQ data. And I'm going to pick this file right here. This is 170,000 reads, approximately 46 megs of data. It's a small set of data, but what this is is just to illustrate um, how this process works. So you specify it, say go. Now what happens is we have our pipeline, and what this is showing is all the steps of the pipeline, what's been completed, what's running, what has already been generated, like the GFF file for the genome, or indexing the genome for mapping the reads. And it's letting you know how all of these things are, are scheduled and, and what's going on. If you're interested to know what the actual pipeline is, if you go to load experiment, go to helps underneath our page docs, this will give you a breakdown of everything you can do. So here's FASTQ data, and it says that we now support RNA-seq data, and it runs our analysis, sorry, expression analysis pipeline developed by James Schnabel. And if you click and follow that link, this will give you the breakdown of all the things that we're doing to your data as it moves through this pipeline, including the parameters that are used. Um, so this is a very fast way to sort of see. And at the end, what you can see is that all these data get loaded back into Koji. Um, we basically have the BAM file. We have reads mapped to position along the genome. And if there are gene models, we will go ahead and convert those data to FPKM so you can see your normalized transcript um, expression values. So let's go back and sort of see how our pipeline is, is processing. Um, we're still working on our cufflinks. Um, this can be a little bit slow relative to everything else that happens. This is um, going ahead and doing that uh, FPKMs. That now has finished. All the data has been loaded in. We're going to go to notebook view. So all of these data have been added into one notebook. So here's our FPKM experiment. If I click on that, I can get details about that. This will include um, some metadata that we add about our pipeline. Um, but importantly, what we can now do is we can take this and we can visualize this particular um, experiment. So when that loads, what we end up with is our genome browser based on JBrowse, and here's the notebook. So these are all three experiments that have been tacked into it. So I can look at my FPKM data, and I'm going to go ahead now and add in some gene features so we can see what those are mapping to specifically. And I'm going to move those features right above the FPKM values. Oh, let me stop this. That happened in just about three minutes for this pipeline. Again, if you use a really large data set, it'll be slower, but this is just to demonstrate how fast and easy it is. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to zoom in on some of these regions um, in a little bit more detail. I'm going to turn off the combined notebook view. So there's our FPKMs. Let's go ahead and take a look at this um, in terms of our read depths. So these are, are the individual nucleotides and what's been mapped to it. And then these here is the BAM, this here is the BAM file, which is showing where all of these individual reads have mapped to. So we can go ahead and just zoom in on one of these spots if, we're, if we really want to get into the detail. So we can see how things are mapping um, to individual exons, to um, 3' UTRs, where our reads are falling, um, so on and so forth. 
So I hope you have found this to be useful. If you do have any questions about how to use Koji, always feel free to go to the help. This is where you can get to our Kojipedia. Feel free to post questions on our forums. These are hosted by iPlant. Um, this is the, uh, the, the forums. Um, you can go ahead and email us directly, ask for some system support, check out our latest news in terms of the latest features that we've been pushing out. Thank you very much.